This is day 20 of reading Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor mourning, wailing, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Then he said, Write these words down, for they are trustworthy and true. He said to me, They are accomplished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. But as for cowards, the unfaithful, the depraved, murderers, the unchaste, sorcerers, idol worshippers, and deceivers of every sort, their lot is in the burning pool of fire and sulfur, which is the second death. One of the seven angels who held the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. He took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with twelve gates, where twelve angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the twelve tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had twelve courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The one who spoke to me held a gold measuring rod to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. The city was square, its length the same as also its width. He measured the city with the rod and found it fifteen hundred miles in length and width and height. He also measured, it, measured its wall, 144 cubits, according to the standard unit of measurement the angel used. The wall was constructed of jasper, while the city was pure gold, clear as glass. The foundations of the city wall were decorated with every precious stone. The first course of stones was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seven chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh hyacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl, and the street of the city was of pure gold, transparent as glass. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave its light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and to it the kings of the earth will bring their treasure. During the day its gates will never be shut, and there will be no night there. The treasure and wealth of the nations will be brought there, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who does abominable things or tells lies. Only those will enter whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is part two of our conclusions about what Revelation has been telling us. In today's reading, we have, uh, once again, a vision of the perfection of creation. Everything has been made new and clean and perfect to align with God's vision of how the world is supposed to be. Though so this is God's economy as it should be realized. What I mean by that is that we see here the transformation of things that have been used earlier in the story in, in a way of condemnation. We saw the world's riches. If you think back to the images of the harlot and the merchants, what they were dealing in were precious stones and gold and symbols of luxury. 
So these are the world's riches that have now been reclaimed by the plan and purposes of God and are now used in a godly way. So now we see that the, the holy city, the city of God, is built with these same things. If you read through the, the paragraph where it talks about all the different kinds of precious stones that go into each course of stone in the wall of the city, this is the same stuff that the harlot was wearing, the same things that the merchants were selling for their own benefit. Only now they have been repurposed. This speaks about how everything finds its true value, how in God's vision, everything, even those things that we may misuse, even those things that we may value impurely for their own sake or for the sake of what they might say about us in worldly terms, about our security, our safety, our wealth, our imperviousness to the pain and loss of this world. All of that has been revised and everything is now built into the city of God. You'll note that the city is enormous, 1,500 miles on each side. So there, there is room for everyone. Again, don't take the, the numbers literally. The goal is to show it as being so large that there can be no limit as to the number of people who can be contained in it. But at the same time, it's with the understanding that all of it, the city, its structures, its security, its beauty, is for the sake of the kingdom of God, not for anyone's individual wealth or individual position. So our value in this city is as citizens, not as owners of the individual building stones. This is an important message when we think about the God's economy that we've been talking about all through this. All of our wealth, all of our possessions are not intended to be statements about us and our worth. Our worth does not come from anything that we own, but rather from our position as children of God, as citizens of the perfected city of God, if only we will accept what it is that God offers and enter into that city, giving up perhaps some of what we have held on to in this world as insurance policies against the ups and downs of life in exchange for the perfection that God promises us. So in this, we have a second vision of what apocalypse is really about. It really is about envisioning this new value for each of us that God desires, that God has already laid out, has already promised to us, if only we will accept what it is that God offers to us. Oh, 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 oh,